Hi, I'm Neil Curtis, and this is part three of six of a series of video snippets taken from a longer tutorial video about how to create a WordPress website, taking it from the very beginning to the very end. And in this particular video snippet, I'm going to show you how to create and embed images that when you hover over them, they change and also link through to another website. Of course, we don't just want those sentences. They're just there to, for us to hold for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on the central column first. Where we've got all these links. And I'm going to put in some links to the different websites that I've been working on. So I'm going to type in Turbo Bike Trainer. Then I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to insert a link to link to another website. So HTTP TurboBikeTrainer.com. And when you click on this, I wanted to open it in a French fresh tab, so I'll highlight that. I'll give it a title, Turbo Bike Trainer. This means when you hover over the text, it'll show this. And I'm going to add the link. Let's update this, and we'll have a look of how it changes the website. Let's refresh this. And you'll see in the central column now we've got that link to Turbo Bike Trainer. And I'll click it, and it opens up the website. We we'll go on to the next one. We'll just copy. The link that we did before for table back training, I'll just paste it three times. And I'll just edit the HTTP link. So the next one is Ski Instructor Courses. So we'll go into the HTTP, just delete that. I'll type in Ski Instructor Courses in com. And then I'll change the link text to Ski Instructor Courses. Okay, so the next one on the list is CTOP. Again, we'll change the HTTP to CTOP. This is .co.uk this time. I realize I forgot to change the heading of the other one. So the, so the title of the is CTOP and the link text is CTOP. And I'll go in and change the title of Ski Instructor Courses. I'll just copy that. Okay, so the final one, the only one left is snowpursuits.co.uk. And then I'll go in and give it the correct title. So when you hover over the link, it'll say Snow Pursuits. And I'll copy that and paste it as the link text. This update, then we'll refresh the page. And you'll see now we've got four links to the different websites. Hover over the link and it shows us the name, but obviously on the live site, we've got a nice logo and you hover over it. So we have to do that now. So we'll just go into new media and then we'll find our image of a logo. We'll open it. And then what we need to do now is we need to style our text link with some CSS. We need to put an ID in it. So I'm going to click the ID homepage projects TBT for table bike trainer. And that's just a name, it can be anything. So I'll copy this name and I'll go into our style sheet and then we'll go down to the bottom and then we'll start writing some styling code, CSS code in here. Got the open and close brackets and then We'll set the image as a background. So you just type in background URL. And then we need to put in the URL of that media file we just uploaded. So you can find it out quite easily. We just go into our media library. And then just click on it. Click it, click edit. And then this is the file URL. So we just copy that. And then I'll paste it into our style sheet. And then it's good practice to write no repeat. It won't do it here anyway, but you can sometimes get a tiling effect of your image in the background, but you put no repeat, it stops this from happening. So we save that, we just refresh our page, and you'll see now we've got a little bit of the logo showing up behind the table trainer text link, but not all of it, because what we need to do is we need to display it as a block, but we also need to set the height and the width. And I know these values, it's 201 pixels wide by 139 pixels high. 
and it's easy to find these dimensions again i'll show you that in a minute and we write display block and if i just save this and we have a look at the site and we refresh the site we now have the full logo showing up there's just a couple more things i want to do with this particular div i'm going to float it left because it's easier to control padding and margins later on if you define an alignment and also you don't actually want the text showing in the text link you want the link but not the text so a way to get rid of this is just do a text indent minus a large number so 9999 pixels and this basically just shifts the text off to the left by that many pixels and this is standard practice in this kind of thing and if we refresh it you've now got a clean logo floating left without a text link showing so the next stage is we need it to change when you hover over it because at the moment it doesn't do that and this is pretty easy to do we just copy this whole div because the div name is the same and we just type a colon with a hover after it and this defines what happens to this div when you hover the mouse over it and all the parameters are the same in this div except the image that we're going to show when you hover over it so that's all we need to do now we just need to go and upload some new media, upload that grayed out version of the logo. Select it, then upload it. And if you click on edit, you can see the URL of the file. So we just need to copy that and then go into our CSS for the hover and then replace the original URL link and save that. And then we go through to the web page and then refresh it. And then when we hover over the image, it changes color. But obviously you can see it's supposed to be gray to start with and then go bright green when you hover over it, but it's the wrong way around here. And that's really easy to fix. We just need to replace these background links from the hover to the non hover and vice versa. And then this should fix everything. I'll just save it and go over to the site and refresh and now we see it starts off grey hover over it, it turns a brighter green and pops out just like a live site and if you click on it it links through to where it's supposed to okay so all we need to do now is do exactly the same for the other links in the site what i'm going to do is i'm going to add all of the images all at once this time instead of one by one so i'll just open up a folder with all the images in that I want and then I'm just select them all and drag them into the file upload in WordPress so we'll just click on the library there and we'll be able to see all of the files that we just uploaded so the next stage is we need to link those images up to the text links for the different sets that we created before so I'm just going to copy the ID that we did for Turbo Trainer. I'll paste it into the other three links. And then I'll change the end. Get rid of the TBT and put SIC for Ski Instructors. CTOP for the CTOP. And the final one, SP, that'll point to Snow Pursuits. I'll just update that. I'll go through to the style sheet. And again, most of the styling is going to be the same. So I'm just going to copy what we did for Turbo Trainer and paste it three times. And then go up and change the ends like we just did before when we specified the IDs. So SIC for Ski Instructors, C Top. And finally, SP for Snow Pursuits. Okay, I'll just save that. So what we have to do is we need to point this background URL to the correct images. So the first one is Ski Instructors. Go through the media library. We want the grayed out Ski Instructors logo. Just copy the URL there. Go back to the style sheet and paste it into the correct place 
And then the dimensions of this logo are different to the Turbo Trainer one. So if we go back to the media upload, we can see the dimensions there, the width and the height. So I'll just modify the width and the height here. The screen struct the courses div. And then we can do the same for the hover image because the dimensions of this are exactly the same. And then now we'll go ahead and get the URL for the hover image. And the hover one's a brighter screen instructor courses logo. Just copy that URL. And then paste it in there. And now that's, that's done. So we need to do exactly the same procedure for the other two logos. So I've sped this up five times because the procedure is identical to what we've just done. Go through changes that the dimensions of the divs for the correct logos and also changing the the background URLs, what, what it's looking for for all of the logos. Okay, and that's Snow Pursuits is the final one. We just save that. Go over to the site. We can close that down now because we're finished with it. Let's refresh. And there you go. We've got all four logos looking nice there. And when you hover over them, they change color and pop out just like they should. And if you click them, go all the way over to the site. And these sites that I'm clicking and showing you now, I've developed them all. And over the course of the next few weeks and months, I'm going to show you exactly how I created all of these sites, just like I'm showing you how I created this one here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put a heading above these logos. So I'm just going to edit this page and in the central column container, I'll just type in, see how I made these websites, how they make money and what the future plans are. And I'll update that and refresh the page. And then we'll see those words are in the right place, but obviously they're the wrong formatting. They're not big enough. So we'll just put a div around this, give this heading some special div of central column heading. Closing div tag and then update that. I'll copy the name of this div. And I'll go into the CSS style sheet. And I'll create some new styling for this div. So it's just hashtag, correct name. And then I'm gonna put font size of 24 pixels. And this is the right, pixel size and I know this because obviously I created the original site but it was just a case of trial and error when I did it for the first time. I'll refresh the page and there we go the fonts got bigger and it's the right size but you can see the spacing between the lines is far too big so we'll just go ahead and modify that in the CSS styling the line height 30 pixels and again this was trial and error at the time save it and refresh the page and it's tightened those lines up and if we compare to the live site it's it's right we just need to do a little bit of extra formatting of this column just to put it in the right position so if we go up to the central column container i just need to put a bit of a margin left of eight percent to push it across a bit save that and have a look site and refresh it has pushed it across and if we compare to the live it looks looks in a good position just need to do a little bit more formatting of the logo space them out a bit what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a div around all of these logo links just so they group together and we can control them as a group so i'm going to create a div id of homepage projects holder closing tags copy that name and then update it and go into the style sheet and then create the styling for this div. So I'm gonna give it a width of 100% and I'm gonna float it left. I'm gonna put a minimum width of 280 pixels just so it doesn't get too small when we squash the screen. And I'm gonna put a margin top of 25 pixels and a margin left of 5%. Again, this was just trial and error when I was creating the site in the first place. Update it, it's pushed them across. 
not quite right yet. Just a little bit of space is needed between individual logos. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into each of the styling for each of the individual links and put a margin top of 10 pixels. I'm just going to paste this same one into all of the hover coding and also all the other link coding. I could have just created a new div and put this in there, but it was quite quick to do it this way, so it's okay. Refresh it and it spaced them out. And compared to the live, and it's exactly the same. So there you have it. Uh, you see how you can put an image into your site and then you can make it change when you hover over it and also make it link through to another external website. This was a part of a larger tutorial about how to make the entire neilcurtis.me landing page website. So if you want to see more, check out that longer video. And of course, you should head over to neilcurtis.me where you'll find a lot more information, a lot more guides, tutorials, and even how to make money off these websites that I create.